the logic of this makes sense. So if I am Rich Paul and Anthony Davis right now, my motivation right now is to get the fuck off the Pelicans. And the only team that can make that offer, you consider just a two horse race right now between the Celtics and the Lakers. Everyone kind of acknowledges that these are the two teams that have the most assets and the most likely destinations for Davis. It's a two horse race between these teams. But Boston is saying, well, let's hold off for five months. Let's delay this race for five months. And if you think about it from Rich Paul and Anthony Davis' standpoint, that means that they're going to have to spend the next five months just sitting around being a sitting duck in a situation that sucks. Like he doesn't want to play there. It's a below 500 team. You know, he wasn't selected as an all-star starter, which is probably extremely insulting to their brand. They're probably trying to get endorsement deals and nobody's like, why would I give you an endorsement deal? You're playing on a team that can't even sell out your arena. Like their motivation right now is just to get out of there and the trade deadline's in like five days. So obviously from their standpoint, they want to try to get any kind of dirt out there that will convince the Pelicans that the Celtics are going to like not be a player in this. They're like, well, Kyrie's leaving. He's not even going to be there. I mean, they're saying, you know, he's just going to be a rental. They're not going to give you a big offer. They're trying to make this whole thing into a one team race so that the Pelicans will essentially say, fuck it. We'll just trade him. We'll move on. We'll just get this over with now instead of waiting in five months. Even though everyone acknowledges that like they're going to get the best offer if they wait five months. So all this stuff, like all these reports, even the Kyrie Irving stuff, I understand it from their standpoint. Whoever's leaking this stuff, it makes sense because on one hand, <laughs> I should give you a second to talk here. I'm sorry, man. Oh, no, no. Please do your thing. If you can convince the Celtics that Kyrie Irving is leaving, then perhaps they'll trade him right now. And if they do that, then suddenly the Celtics are a player and Anthony Davis as well. And it becomes a two-team race right now and they don't have to wait five months but in the meantime they just want basically the celtics to concede and say it will we can't do it if it's going to be a if it's going to be just a one-year rental we can't give up tatum they want the celtics to basically back off or at very least they want to convince the pelicans that the celtics are full of shit when they say we'll give you the world they want to go to the pelicans and say boston's lying to you they're not going to give you shit just take our offer now we'll give you everything now let's just get it over with and that's the whole motivation behind this Unbelievable how this stuff works. Like, did did you, uh, I think the new uh, Woj podcast that dropped yesterday, did you happen to hear that? I missed it. What did he say on that one? Well, it dropped like midday yesterday with Bobby Marks, and he said, uh, he kind of uh, reiterated on the ESPN broadcast last night during the game, but he said, like, the Celtics have heard from Kyrie within, like, the last few days that he is committed to the franchise. So I just don't understand how Clutch is trying to, drive this shit down everybody's throat like i feel like Woj kind of squashed it yesterday yeah i mean if you think about it it's it's low effort stuff if you're clutch the media is going to eat this stuff up you know that and we know that they're basically going to be doing this in vain because it's it's pretty unlikely that pelicans are actually going to cave and trade davis right now and they have no reason to they have no reason to they should wait the five months you know obviously the celtics are going to have a killer package to offer for him Obviously, the Knicks are going to have a package built around potentially a top three pick, right? Yep. So there's no real reason for them to do this, but it's a low effort thing. Clutch and the Lakers and Davis's camp, they can all kind of throw shit against a wall right now and just hope that maybe they create enough drama that Kyrie demands a trade. Yeah. Or maybe they create enough drama that the Pelicans decide, oh, you know what? I don't think we trust that Boston is actually going to be able to keep Kyrie from all these reports we're hearing. I mean, it's nonsense, but the idea is that if they create enough hysteria here, then maybe, just maybe, when they come at them right before the deadline with their best offer, then maybe the Pelicans will say, screw it, we're just going to do it. And that's what this is all about. And I get it. I mean, I do get it. I think that once we get past this trade deadline, it's a whole different story. Boston will then be a legit possibility for Davis. And their story is going to completely change. It's going to be like, oh, Boston is... Because if you think about it from the logic of what that team is, we check all the boxes of what Davis wants. He wants to play for a winner. He wants to play for a team that has a large fan base. He wants to play for somewhere where he can become top voter in the All-Star game. He wants to get endorsements. That's Boston, like, across the board. Yeah, I mean, LA and New York are about as good as it gets from a market standpoint, but Boston is... It's a huge market. Like, you sacrifice a little bit of marketing probably between Boston and LA, but look at the core that you're going to be playing with. Like you're going to be in title contention year in and year out, no matter what. Right. I mean, once we get past this trade line, the stories will completely change. But in the short term, 
If we're talking about Davis's mindset right now, I completely get it. You know, five months, five months is a long fucking time. Get me in a Laker jersey, fist bumping with Jack courtside before he croaks. In a week, I could be living in Malibu and ordering my own Kardashian. Of course I want to play in LA. I've been eating all the beignets and gumbo. A man can handle it. It just makes sense. All right, I get it. Yeah, missing out on five months of huge marketing deals. You know, living in California sounds appealing and playing for the Lakers right now alongside LeBron James and selling all those jerseys right now and getting those endorsement deals right now and lining up movie deals right now that sounds super appealing as opposed to five months like five five fucking months it's been four days of this and i already want to kill myself like i can't yep, imagine with you. five months would be insane so i get it but once we get past this deadline everything will change 